this horror story took place in a dormitory. Our story begins with a student named Akio. Moving into her new dormitory, a place she would be living with three other students for the duration of her four years of college. Aiko was quick to notice that one of the girls was quite unlike the others. Whereas the others seemed joyful and friendly, this girl seemed cold and distant, and she never looked away from the book she was reading. Aiko soon learned she had moved into room 1304, a room known for its troubled and disturbing past. Aiko spent the rest of the day unaware of the events that would unfold. And so, on her first night, something strange occurred. Aiko was taking a bath when suddenly she heard a loud knocking on the bathroom door. She stood there for a second and remembered that the two girls had gone out, so it couldn't have been either of them. As she continued to think, the knocking began again. At this point, she froze. Then it hit her. It must be Tanny, that cold, weird girl, she thought. She cracked the door open and yelled at her to stop. But Tanny did not respond. Not that Aiko cared much, as the knocking had stopped. Although, it wasn't long until the knocking started again. As annoyed as she could be, she put on her shirt, wrapped her half-washed hair in a towel and went out to put an end to it. To Aiko's surprise, there was no one in the room. All she could feel was a dim, cold breeze. Aiko tried hard to reassure herself that this was nothing but a weird occurrence, but the fear could not stop creeping in on her. She gathered up the courage and went out to the hallway, but just like her dorm, it was empty and dark. She rushed back in and quickly closed the door. She was starting to shake. The thought of the supernatural never occurred to her. She only worried about being stalked by a pervert and wanted to stay safe. A few moments passed and Akio started to calm down, but not enough. The knocking started again. Aiko took a deep breath and slowly opened the door. This time, there was a woman standing in front of her, soaking wet. Akio screamed in shock, and then she realized it was Tani, her quiet roommate. Akio, relieved, asked Tani when she went out and why she was wet, but Tani did not say a word. Regardless, she felt sorry for her roommate, and after all, she was standing there dirty, wet, her face as pale as the moon, and with an expression that lacked confidence. She put aside the annoyance of her silence and decided to care for Tani. She had Tani sit on the bed and went to get a towel to help her dry herself. She patiently waited until Tani had calmed down and with a soft and delicate tone asked her what had happened, but Tani did not speak. Frustrated, Akio told her that if she did not want to talk that she would have to go get the dorm manager. This seemed to have worked. Tani finally spoke up. Her voice was trembling as she said that something had happened to her mother. As soon as she finished speaking, Tani, as if remembering something, stood up and walked towards her desk. Then she looked through the drawer. She was looking for something. Tani was looking for her phone. She was starting to look desperate, searching. Tani rummaged for a while, but couldn't find it. She turned to Akio and asked to borrow her phone. She then proceeded to tell her story. She had come this morning with her mother from the countryside to enroll at the school. That morning, they had to hastily leave their home as there weren't any other trains leaving that day. Her mother wanted to stay with Tani for a few days to help her get settled, but she had to leave that same day as she had two younger children that needed to be taken care of at home. She kept on going about her family's story. She lost her father at a young age, which brought a big burden to her mother. She wanted to help her, get a job and support the family, but her mother refused. Aiko just stood there, tense and uncomfortable, and she did not understand what was going on. Tani then continued, she had gone out to buy groceries when she saw on the news that a train had derailed and sank into the river. She immediately thought of her mother. As soon as she said that, Akio pulled out her phone. Throughout all of this, Akio was confused and shocked that she knew she needed to help Tani make a call. So, she called the number that Tani gave her. 
but no one answered. Thinking that maybe Tani had read the wrong number, Akio gave the phone to her and asked her to try again. Tani was obviously in distress. She was shaking and her eyes were welling up. But once again, no one answered. The worry and fear could no longer be held. Tani cried loudly. Tears kept flowing down from her cheeks as she kept on crying for her mom. Akio tried hard to keep herself together, even though she was panicking inside. She tried to calm her roommate down. Keeping her posture and thinking quickly, Akio suggested they should go and check at her home for themselves. Tani was quick to reject the offer. She wanted to go alone. Before Akio could react, Tani stood up and left, but not before looking at her in the eyes and saying thank you. Akio refused to let her go on her own in such a state, but it was pointless. She was gone. Tani was so fast that by the time Akio went out to the door, Tani was already at the end of the hallway. She just stood there as her figure disappeared into the distance. Akio stood at the door for a moment, which felt like an eternity, observing everything, trying to make sense of things. She was shocked to the point of losing control of her limbs. She could barely stand in place. She was panicking and trying to tell herself that this must be a mistake or a bad dream. The next morning, Akio went rushing to see the manager. She wanted to ask about Tani's contact information. Once there, she asked for her, but the manager looked confused. He told her that she must have gone to the wrong dorm because there wasn't a Tani registered there. As soon as she heard that, her face went dark. The possibility of having met a ghost crossed her mind. As she was walking down the hall, lost in thought, she met one of her roommates. Akio wanted to leave no trace of doubt, so she asked her about Tani. The question, in turn, made her roommate almost faint. As it turns out, Tani had been a student living in room 1304 until she died in a train accident five years ago. She told Akio that ever since that day, People have seen strange shadows in that dorm, and more than one had suggested it was Tani. By now, Akio could just not hold it together anymore. The pain, stress, and fear were just too much. She broke in tears. She was putting together all the pieces of the events from the last 24 hours. Everything pointed towards one explanation. Could it be that she had met a ghost the night before? The thoughts were too much. She broke down, shaking and crying, until she passed out of exhaustion. A few days passed, Akio had managed to assimilate what had happened and decided to take the train to Tani's home. She arrived at what was now an abandoned house. Inside of it, there was a photo of Tani's mom. As it turns out, Tani's mother had also passed away just a day after her daughter. She couldn't bear the pain and sorrow of losing a child. On her way out, she stumbled upon a tomb, engraved in it were the names of Tani and her mother. She thought how strange it was to have them both buried in the same tomb. Tani's two other siblings ended up being adopted by the uncle. On her way home, Akio could not stop thinking about the mother and the daughter. She felt an incredible sorrow for these two. Who knows? Maybe your roommate will turn out to be a ghost as well. And if that's the case, make sure you tell us the story.